In this chapter, we investigate the basic variables that are used to evaluate the progress of an economy. We will examine the role of savings and investment in the growth of an economy and how uncertainty and demand and supply shocks impact the economy. When looking at demand shocks, we'll compare the outcomes based on flexible and sticky prices. There are many different measures used by economists to evaluate how economies operate and how their performances might be improved. Chief among these are real GDP, unemployment, and inflation. Real GDP, which stands for gross domestic product, measures the value of final goods and services produced within the borders of a country during a specific period of time, usually a year. Real GDP is calculated by taking nominal GDP, which measures the dollar value of the goods and services at their current prices, and statistically eliminating the price changes that have occurred over time. Unemployment is another important measure. High rates of unemployment are undesirable because they indicate that a large portion of the workforce is not producing. Inflation, the third measure, looks at the increases in the overall level of prices. High levels of inflation mean that it will cost the average family more to purchase the same goods and services. Macroeconomic models are used to clarify many important questions about the power and limits of government economic policy. The answers to these questions are critical because countries experience vastly different economic results at different times. The models help explain why large differences occur and how government policies can influence rates of growth, unemployment, and inflation. The Industrial Revolution created a major shift in economic growth. Output began to rise much faster than population growth, leading to ever-increasing living standards in the industrialized countries. In countries that were not industrialized but rather still relied on agricultural industries, the growth rates tended to be much slower. This led to great differences today in the living standards of countries. At the heart of economic growth is the principle that to raise standards of living over time, an economy must devote some of its current output to increasing future output. This requires both saving and investment. Saving occurs when current consumption is less than current output and investment occurs when resources are devoted to increasing future output. While households are the principal source of savings, businesses are the principal economic investors. The savings of households are collected by banks and other financial institutions which lend the funds to businesses who can invest it in equipment, factories, and other capital goods. No one knows what the future holds. This uncertainty complicates decisions about savings and investments. Shocks occur when unexpected situations occur. Economies are exposed to both demand shocks and supply shocks. Demand shocks are unexpected changes in the demand for goods and services, while supply shocks involve unexpected changes in the supply of goods and services. These shocks can be caused by many factors. If prices are flexible, the market price will be able to adjust to unexpected changes in demand. There would be no short-run fluctuations in output, production levels would remain constant, and unemployment levels would remain the same. In reality, many prices are inflexible and not able to change rapidly in response to unexpected demand changes. Since the price cannot change, businesses must pursue other avenues such as changing production to match the demand. They may st store inventory to help with unexpected surges in demand, but this is very costly. In this graph, we see that under flexible prices, production will stay the same and demand will shift in response to the demand shock. Price is able to adjust either up or down depending on if there is a positive or negative demand shock. In this graph, we see what happens when prices are not flexible. Since the price is fixed, the shift in the demand curve causes a change in the unit supplied at that price level. When the demand shifts left, the economy will suffer as firms that make the goods will cut production, lay off workers, and cause falling GDP and rising unemployment. Not all prices are sticky or slow to change. Many commodities such as corn, oil, and natural gas feature extremely flexible prices and can literally react in seconds to changes in supply and demand. Prices for final goods and services consumed by people tend to be quite sticky. The degree of the stickiness can be measured by looking at the length of time between the change in the market and the price of changes in goods and services. This table illustrates the stickiness of some common goods and services. In the long run view, 
all prices are flexible and price stickiness will moderate. Even if a firm must make short run adjustments to adapt to shocks, in the long run, it does not have to stick with that policy.